you know my story right we zoom past us we need a lot of setup to do this to do that and then we are ready uh, i want to share one experience while uh, and that's from my travel diaries the last my last profile took me to different places and i want to share some of the stories uh, that have been there so in my experience there are two kinds of kingdoms and or at least so uh, i have experienced the first is the kingdom that is known by the king and his rule now we spent about 9 years in oman and after spending some time in the country you will quickly make a conclusion that oman is about its king the late sultan uh, qaboos bin said uh, just 2 years before he passed being a, a king he was so connected with his roots with his people he would often make a visit to the small town villages spend time with the with the elders he will take their suggestions uh, and and often uh, implement them and during his uh, during our stay uh, we have seen the country enjoyed peace with its neighbor in fact it played a very pivotal role in the middle east peace process and i want to share one story from his life is that when our president uh, late is yes, okay late uh, dr shankar daya sharma sharma he used to be a king's teacher so when the king invited him in oman he treated him while his motorcade was going he put flowers he showered the flowers by the helicopter just to show the appreciation for his teacher the king is showing his appreciation for the teacher and by last day we enjoyed full freedom of practicing a religion so the story of oman and its king the late sultan qaboos bin said goes hand in hand that was our experience now the second uh, experience that i had is that the kingdom is known by the people living in it so what happened my visit to thailand was very surprising now normally thailand is known for its beaches shopping experience uh, massages the nightlife but on the contrary i had a very different experience when uh, and i was bowled over by the culture and the humility of the thai people you know i always believe that this position of um, greeting uh, we call it namaskaram is very core to india right because it shows humility in how we treat others though i haven't seen reality humility at its core in india it rather felt like a formality but when i met this people be it greeting be it thanksgiving and apologizing i could feel the humility to its core in my heart it scored it my heart you know at first uh, you know uh, i thought more or less how it is in india but then it was totally different the other thing i noticed in thailand is that the big pictures of the king and queen are placed at various places on the street at the places and i have seen that the people who whenever they pass through that they will wait there they'll pay their respect and then they'll go and i thought must be something a some catch because kingdom we know right so i thought must be some cameras are there to check whether the people are really paying the respect and to my surprise there were no cameras then i realized that this is the love and respect that the people are showing to their king and queen that was amazing so for me now thailand is about its people and their culture for me it's no more a place of shopping a, pay, a place of uh, night life but it is about their people and culture so that means now in my experience we know that the kingdom is known by its king his rulership and the people who are living in it so have you ever wonder what about us christians what are we known for are we only known by a king jesus christ and his rule or we also known by the people who are we living in it how it is about us what are we known for 
you know so today i'm going to talk about our role in the kingdom of god now whenever the kingdom of god uh, and anybody from gci would be speaking on this subject of course we would refer to the great gary dado because he has written pages and pages of uh, the um, uh, things about the kingdom of god so my today's uh, sermon also has some of the information from his some of the lectures so before we try to uncover this question let's first understand what is kingdom of god you know now i remember pastor dan you took us through the kingdom of god in our bible study series we believe yeah so we won't be going that deep but we will be exploring because we have to understand what what is our role in the kingdom of god now the phrase kingdom of god or the kingdom of heaven was one of the primary theme of jesus christ teaching as he announced the arrival of the god's kingdom that was his primary thing now the notion that god ruled and sustained the universe was a common place in that time the jewish thinking and you can see that in Psalm 113 verse 19 and the psalmist says the lord has established his throne in heaven and his kingdom over all the earth and the david says in psalm 145 verse 13 your kingdom is an everlasting kingdom and your dominion endures through all generation all the earth and all the generations now the even the old testament prophets even they also look forward to a time and a period in the future when god's kingdom would be established and we read that in isaiah when the enemies will be vanquished we read the exile would come home and an everlasting kingdom will be established in jerusalem that was how the old testament prophet used to look forward to yeah but the kingdom of god is not just a future term something that is going to happen that term is very much present here and now you see jesus tells us in luke chapter 17 verse 21 that the kingdom has arrived and it's in our midst the kingdom of god is very much in our midst now jesus brings with him the actual presence of the kingdom not just the message of kingdom he brings the kingdom with him as he comes now god's kingdom operate wherever jesus is because he is our king and his kingdom operates wherever he is now the kingdom of god has its reality in the living presence and activity of its king jesus this is about the kingdom it's all about christ his living presence and whatever he does in other words the kingdom is of god is a fellowship a community in communion with god through jesus christ and with each other through the spirit of jesus christ what is kingdom of god it's nothing but a community of people in communion with our god through christ that's our vertical communion and in communion with each other through the spirit of christ so it's horizontal and vertical that defines the kingdom now we can enter into the kingdom of god by believing in the good news right and repenting ourselves that was the message what john the baptist and jesus shared in their message about the kingdom of god now apostle paul confirms our citizenship in heaven as we read in philippians chapter 3 verse 20 says but we are citizens of heaven where the lord jesus christ lives that is where we have our citizenship and also in ephesians chapter 2 verse 19 he says we gentiles too belong to god family and now i want you to read and emphasize the word you are so now you gentiles are no longer strangers and foreigners you are citizens 
along with God's holy people. You are members of God's family. Now, if you emphasize the word you are is a present term. It's not in the future. We are. We are the people. We are the family members of God's family. That means it is in current time. Which also means we have dual responsibility to play. Because now, first and primary, we see we are citizens of Republic of India. And then we also are the citizens of Kingdom of God. That's our dual responsibilities. Now, in order to understand the responsibilities, we need to, before we play out our responsibility, that is our role, we need to understand our responsibilities. What are our responsibilities and our role so that we can fulfill our role in the kingdom of God? And Apostle Paul tells to, to us and to the people in the Corinthians, in 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 20, we are therefore Christ's ambassador. Now, you know, an ambassador represent their country. They represent their king. Their actions and behavior are directly connected with the country. And through their way of living, other people can make it out what the king, what the country represents. You know, when you step outside our home, when we step outside our home, we first represent our family. And by the way of our behavior, the way we collaborate, the way we De uh, deal with other people we represent our society that we belong to and the moment you and I leave our country we represent our country so that means you and I when we are outside our country we represent 1.3 billion people that's the responsibility we carry yeah that means we have a big responsibility and now on top of that, because as a Christian, our responsibility now increases twofold. We just don't represent our family. We don't just don't represent our, our society, our country, but we also now represent our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Each one of us, each, whether we it's, it's a small kid, to youth, to, to adult, to old people, each one of us represent Christ. Now, when we now we know that we are ambassadors, we represent a uh, 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 king and his kingdom. So now you see there are two kind of ambassadors. So ambassadors, you can classify them into two kinds. Now, first uh, kind of uh, ambassadors are they call themselves as the triumphalism. Uh, this one. So now, basically, they think they play a major role in bringing the kingdom of God, right? That means they, they think uh, if people, if enough people come together and work hard with priority to share the gospel, then we can make the kingdom of God reality because more and more people will come quickly to the kingdom of God. Of course, this is with God's help. Now, these ambassadors also, but they think they have a major role to play. They have a major role to play. And what happens sometimes? These ambassadors, they also often criticize uh, other churches or their own church because the church is not doing enough to expedite the kingdom of God. They feel you have to have some techniques. You have to have some strategy. You need to share your message in certain ways that more and more people will come. Now, they have a very good heart, mind me, okay? But they feel it is up to them to fasten the kingdom of God. And of course, they pray, but they think they have the onus of bringing the kingdom of God faster to make it realize faster. Then there are other kinds of uh, uh, ambassadors. They fall into other category they call whiteism. Now, these, they fall into the other spectrum. They think Christ has come on the earth and he has done his job. We don't need to do anything. Look, he has come. He has conquered the devil. Our sins are forgiven. So now let him do the job. We, we, have, we are done. And often this feeling develops into a separatism. 
a separatism in the sense they said well let's concentrate us living purely as christ expects us to do or as a family let us be separate and show how christians are or as a church let us be so it's the all emphasis on is is on separatism and it's all emphasis on ourselves our morality our church our family everything but any attempt to influence outside this circle is avoided do you remember this kind of attitude i think in our early wcg days we had this we were the we were the chosen one and the emphasis of uh, outreach was not much it was all the effort was all on us becoming uh, remaining separate but if you now see both these extreme of these ambassadors doesn't help in one area they do everything they don't leave god to do anything they take the onus of their actions everything and in the second spectrum this quietism this ambassador they think christ has to do everything we are now saved christ will bring uh, eventually everybody to him so all we need to do is remain loyal to christ and remain separate but if you do if you see both this kind of ambassadors doesn't help to serve the purpose it doesn't reflect our king and his kingship and his rule properly so there is a third approach uh, about going on to be a good ambassador and that is to participate in the ongoing ministry of christ through the spirit now what does that mean now so what does that mean that means we join with our efforts with christ effort as he is working through the spirit to bring his kingdom into reality we join with our efforts we partnership in this one so what happens here christ take the ownership we joins so it's a partnership in the ministry so these ambassadors join their king as he is working in the world so that's about participation so what happened now we have a role to play because we must stand as a witness or a sign of the coming full fledged kingdom now what does a witness do now witness bears a testimony testimony not to itself but to the reality that we have a first hand knowledge of that's why we call it a witness that means we have experience we are to witness in that participant we have to witness and second thing it it expect us to do is to bear a sign now a sign does not point to itself but points to another far greater reality which means as a christian we bear the witness to this thing which is the coming full fledged kingdom and our witness is very important because the holy spirit will use our witness to tell about christ to tell about his kingdom then how do we witness the kingdom of god we witness because we are called to live a hope filled lives that embodies the real sign of the coming kingdom now it is through our life and through our experience that the holy spirit is using to bring other people in touch with christ and his kingdom jesus is using yours and mine testimony to tell about himself to the world yeah and as he draws people near to him to relationship with him we play a major role and that is why we need to bear the witness now i want to touch a bit about this participation ministry often because uh, it's it's about last two years that gci also we talk about participation now often there is a there is a understanding that look participation means i have nothing to do christ will do he will lead he takes the onus whether it is a successful whether the ministry is a failure he takes the ownership what i do i just join so that means i do not play any role in it i just join that he is doing no but that is so wrong we play a major role 
in this participation ministry but with the guidance and leadership of our lord and savior because through the spirit he helps us to be a witness and sign to his coming kingdom now which means we are an ambassadors we are called to witness hope but what is our hope what is our hope our hope is in the finished work of jesus christ through the spirit who has offered himself as a sacrifice for our sin so that we are no more under the bondage of sin which brings death we have a hope and a promise of a eternal life of fellowship and communion with our triune god and all this is a gift when we just we, we receive that when we just accept christ as a lord and savior so that means the promise of an everlasting life of communion is not only for the future it is also for the present term this life of communion this experience of communion is also for this present term and it applies now so how does our hope reflect in our life and in our lifestyle now apostle paul uh tells in his um, second letters to the people in corinthians that we live by faith and not what we see now if you see uh, sometime we feel was apostle paul aware of the situation but if you see, read the first three chapters of uh, second corinthians you will see he himself was going through a lot of trouble and so does the people of corinthians were having trouble and yet he says we walk by faith and not what we see but i'll tell you our problems our challenges they are very real you know it is a present danger now let me give you some example now some of us are going through the financial trouble we are not sure even how the day will pass by now that crunch is real that not having sufficient amount for tomorrow is a very certainty it's very clear some of us are going through medical issues now the problem the pain the suffering is very real is very certain that's our problems that we are facing through you know uh, we as a uh, board are struggling to get our uh, members from the south have a safe exit but we are going through the emotional pain suffering and that is real if you ask uh, mr rao mr franklin that is real that is something we see and yet apostle paul is saying we live by faith and not what we see now if you just take a moment here and i want you to just uh, focus on a problem of yours that you are going through which is larger than you can handle at this moment i'm i'm, I'm not going to do a deliv deliverance service but i want you to just put focus on that problem and just see its impact and its consequences how real they are just a moment see that it is a very present reality right and yet apostle paul is saying we live by faith we live by the hope through faith and not what we see which means he is aware he was aware what the the corinthians were going through and today a lord is aware of what we are going through and yet he is challenging us to go by faith he knew that the problems were real he knew there's consequences was all sudden if something going to happen in the afternoon yes it is going to happen and yet he is telling you and me we walk by faith take a step of faith having been aware of the reality god is telling you and me today take a step of faith take a step of faith but did he just give us take a step by faith and not given us how to handle it absolutely not apostle paul give two solution to it in the first one he tells us how to handle the current reality the current problems you know he tells us in second corinthians chapter 4 verses 8 and 9 he says we often suffer suffer even when we don't know what to do we never give up in times of trouble god is with us and when we are knocked down 
we get up again. Remember, in our troubles, in our problems, in our challenges, we are not alone. God is with us. His very presence holds us and he carries us during our trouble. Now, there are many questions that come sometimes. You, you will question yourself, is he even aware of my problems? Oh, absolutely, yes, he is. Then the second question that might come to you is, does he listen to my prayer of my deliverance? Absolutely, yes. The third thing is, will he intervene instantly in my problem? Probably, yes. Probably not. Some people think, will my obedience to the word and my spiritual life, does that guarantee a problem without, a life without problem? Absolutely not. Absolutely not. But the thing is, God is involved and is with us every time. In every life situation we are going through, he is there. As I see back and the troubles I have faced, some he delivered instantly, yes. Some he took time to deliver. And some I am still hoping for him to deliver. But I can testify you one thing. That all these tribulations and trials just made me stronger in who I am and who I am in Christ. And his presence never left us. The comfort of his presence never left me. And that's the promise God is giving you and me today. That my comfort will never live despite the problem, despite the reality, despite the sting it is creating. I will not leave you. And the second thing he is giving the aspect is not only for the short term, but second he is saying us for the long term. And long term in verse 9 and 10. Uh, and uh, he's telling uh, this in verse chapter 12, verse 9 and 10. He says, Christ is saying to him and to us today, my grace is sufficient for you. For my power is made perfect in weakness. In our weaknesses, his power is made perfect. And my grace is sufficient. Here our king, the Lord himself, is giving you and me assurance. And I'll just read the end of the verse 10. For when I am weak, I am strong. We are battered. We are destroyed by our circumstances. But when we are weak, we are strong in the Lord. Because his grace will carry us. His grace will carry us. And then Apostle Paul says, it's not only for his assurance is not only for the problem in current time, but it's also for the future. He's preparing us for future. And what is that? We never give up. Our bodies are gradually dying, but we are being made stronger each day. These little troubles are getting us ready for an eternal glory that will make all our troubles seem like nothing. So our troubles, we have a solution now, but also our troubles are getting us ready. We are becoming ready stronger for the everlasting life with our Christ, with our King. As Christ is raised from dead, so we will be. And that's the assurance we have of life with him forever. And as an ambassador of Christ, we have to show exactly this kind of hope in Christ in our lives to other people around us. As an ambassador, this is the hope we have to live. Yes, we have problems, but that is our hope. And this is the hope that other people around us should see. And my question to all of us today, including me, is do we witness this hope, the hope we live to others? Because only when they see this hope, they will look forward to us, asking us to share that hope with them. So be strong in our troubles because he is still in control. And another way of us another way of us living in the hope is to acknowledge and accept the saving work of Christ on the cross and also by partaking in the renewed covenant through the act of communion. As we participate, every aspect of our Christian life, we rely not on our obedience, not on our righteousness, but we solely depend upon the grace of God. 
grace of God incarnated in Jesus Christ. We thus approach humbly in response to give up our old ways, to give up our sinful ways, to give up our old conviction. What was our old conviction? That our God is not enough. We give up this. As we approach to the Holy Communion, we renewed ourselves in the communion. We partake and we said, again, in the body, in the blood, we refresh ourselves. Yeah. And when we celebrate communion, we partake of the bread and the cup in remembrance of and in communion with our Savior. Proclaim his death until he comes. And now I would like to read from 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 23 to 26. Then I will uh, pray for the elements of the communion. Then we will come, uh, take, go back to our seat, and then we will partake together. Yeah? So I read from 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 23 to 26. For I received from the Lord what I also passed on to you, the Lord Jesus. On the night he was betrayed, he took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took up the cup, saying, This cup is a new covenant in my blood. Do this. And whenever you drink it, in remembrance of me. For whenever you eat this bread and they drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Join with me as we pray for the elements of the communion. Heavenly Father, gracious Lord, we come before you just as we are. But we approach humbly but boldly because of the finished work that you have done on the cross, O Lord which has given us an access to be with Father, O Lord God. Being our, our ambassador to our Father, Lord, you give us hope. And today we come boldly to participate in this new covenant, O Lord. So talk with each one of us, O Lord, as each one of us, we make a recommitment to you. And as a response, O Lord, we would make every effort on us to be in communion with you by keeping our sin, our old ways away from you, away from uh, our relationship with you, Lord. I want to thank you and bless you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Now we take the elements uh, and go back to our place and then we'll partake it together. Join with me as we spend the time in thanksgiving. Our Father, gracious Lord, how privileged are we, O Lord that we can approach your throne boldly through the finished work of Christ, O Lord. Here we are, O Lord, renewing our covenant with you, O Lord, as we partake in the Holy Communion. And Lord, as we approach, help us, O Lord, in every day to acknowledge and keep our old ways away so that we can participate in this relationship of communion with you wholly, O Lord. And that every effort we make, though by our own way we cannot, O Lord, we need your grace so that we can be in communion with you. We thank you for this privilege uh, to take it together, O Lord, God, with your bigger family. We want to thank you and bless you. The glory and honor. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Mm -hmm.